Alright, so today I'm here to introduce you to the Agilent 7800 ICP MS system. So this is for a trace elemental analysis, ultra trace, so down to really low concentrations. So let's begin. For essential for maintaining our plasma is a high purity argon supply. A tank like this will last us about eight hours if we're running the plasma. We need to make sure we open our gas tank. We're low on gas, however, um, this will last us plenty of time just to get things ignited. So we're initializing, and so you can see here we have our mainframe. This is the auto sampler. This is um, essentially representing our um, nebulizer. So we have a sample come in, it gets vaporized. Um, large droplets drain, um, and of course the smallest ones actually enter the torch. So we have our argon inputs. The torch is formed here. The coils, these are RF coils. They actually maintain our plasma. And this is actually representing our um, skimmer cone. Then we have ion lenses that accelerate and focus our ions into the collision cell. So the collision cell is an octopole. It actually has um, uh, pressurized uh, high purity helium that is used to um, to collide with the uh, uh, molecular ions um, as they enter here. Um, so collisions can drop their energy. The larger they are, the larger the, the uh, collision cross section. And so the more likely they're going to lose energy and basically not be able to make it out of the octopole into our quadrupole, which is where our ion separation occurs. And then we go to our detector, which is an electron multiplier. Our ion comes through and it hits a sensitive plate. We get a cascade where we multiply the number of electrons that are um, emitted at each collision. So we get amplification as well as, um, as well as detection. And we end up with an output that shows us ions at each mass to charge ratio. And so we get um, isotopic um, ions, ion uh, distribution. So we can identify and uh, quantify um, elements. So I'm going to go up here to plasma. Plasma on. I just change that. Okay. Sorry, I want to watch these. Oh, I need to turn my chiller on to do ignite the plasma. So now it gets really noisy in here. And we want to turn on our helium gas as well. takes it a while to initiate the plasma that's about to ignite. Let's go up here and see what we can see. There we go. So there's our plasma. 4,000 degrees, that's an argon plasma. So those are argon ions glowing away. Um, of course, we have a protective UV shield here. So you can hear it whirring. So it's actually going through and positioning itself to optimize. But we're not going to keep this on, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the plasma off. So once the plasma is shut down, um, I can introduce you to the rest of the system and uh, walk you through all those elements that I ran through in the software. And here we'll see it extinguish. Excellent. Now let's move on to the system itself. Sample introduction system. So basically we have an auto sampler. So our samples will travel up this line, they'll get pumped into here, and then actually come over here to where we have a nebulizer. So the solution comes with the nebulizer where we also have input gases. It is uh, vaporized, nebulized to a very fine mist, and then it has actually passed into the plasma torch. So here we have the torch box. So this is our ICP torch, a little bit. So our sample comes up this line right here, actually joins to our torch, where we have concentric flows of argon flowing in to maintain our plasma and to cool the torch assembly and prevent it from melting. 
So the plasma is actually induced here. The plasma is around 4,000 degrees Kelvin. So the sample comes in, hits the plasma, is atomized and ionized, and then it enters the vacuum chamber via a skimmer cone. So here I've actually pushed our torch box back out of the way so you can actually see the sampler cone. So this is the outer sampler cone. The, uh, the ions actually enter that little hole right there where they vacuum. And then a separate inside that's that sampler cone is a skimmer cone that's even finer tipped. Um, and that's where it actually enters the um, high vacuum of the quadrupole. So our vacuum system consists of a four pump or a roughing pump. It is uh, connected to the area actually between the sampler and the skimmer cone. So it pulls it down to a low vacuum around 10 to the minus three Pascal. And then of course we have a, I believe we have a turbo molecular pump that's housed inside here, but pulls the uh, mass spec chamber down to um, high vacuum. So 10 to the minus six Pascal. And we have a heat exchanger or a chiller. It serves to actually cool the, um, it actually cools this plate right here to keep it from getting too hot while we're actually running the plasma. So in here is our mass spectrometer and collision cell. It's all encased inside our vacuum chamber, so um, you can't actually see them. But our octopole is a collision cell that is pressurized with high purity helium. There's our helium tank right there. Or we can actually tamp down the energy of some of the ions through collision or uh, break up any mole yeah, we break up molecular ions so that we can uh, reduce background. So once our uh, analytes leave the collision cell, they then move toward a quadrupole mass analyzer. So that is actually what separates them. their isotopic ions of our uh, elements. And then ultimately those that make it through as we scan go to an electron multiplier, which is our detector.